Morning. Thank you all for being here with us today. I'm Julie Pallas, the director of the West Virginia Women's Commission, and we're happy that you are joining us uh, along with, we are hosting this event today, along with the Herbert Henderson Office of Minority Affairs. And so we are happy to be here in the governor's office with the first lady joining us. I would like to uh, introduce uh, or recognize people that are here today as well that are elected officials, appointed officials, or someone representing them here. If you would please stand up and wave and, and say who you are, I would appreciate it. Brian Allen, from U.S. Senator Joe Manchin's office. Hi, I'm Susie Azevedo. I'm with Congressman Alex Moody's office. Hi, I'm Skeen Hicks. I'm in the House of Delegates. I represent Wayne County. Wonderful. Thank you all so much for being here as well. I would also like anyone who uh, is with the Women's Commission and Herbert Henderson Office of Affa uh, Minority Affairs to please stand up too so people can recognize who's here. Thank you. And then I would like you to also recognize yourselves as citizens of West Virginia, as state employees, nonprofit organization representatives. So give yourselves a big hand. We're here to celebrate West Virginia Women's History Month with the spirit of peace, unity, and inspiration. We're here to honor the women that came before us, the women who stand next to us, and the women who will be making history in the future. First of all, I'm gonna give a little history lesson. I hope you all outsmart me. Do you happen to know who this first woman here is? Yes, excellent. Second, Mildred Bateman, hospitals named after her. Third person, Pearl Buck. Pearl Buck, excellent. Excellent, Pearl Buck. The fourth person, Kevin Johnson. We know her well now, don't we? Thank goodness. And the fourth person may be a little harder. Or the fifth person, sorry. Hazel Dickens, who's an Appalachian folk singer. You all should uh, look her up on Google. She has great songs. In fact, we had a couple of years ago, one of the students actually sang one of her songs. So good, they had a little history lesson today as well. All right, uh, as it was in the past, as it is now, women need to have a voice. And that's what we're here doing, to tell the stories of people who have come before us and to continue doing that for our communities and our sisters, our mothers, our daughters, those who are in need of our families, who need us to stand strong for them. And so those people who stood strong before us help us to do that. I'm proud and honored to be here. And also, uh, they are celebrating this day across the United States. And so we stand in solidarity with the other women in the United States and across the globe. I have the privilege to introduce to you today an accomplished woman, woman on her own right, as a competitive horsewoman, business owner, educated, educator, avid women's basketball fan, a darn good cook, and an overall champion for our state. It is my great pleasure to welcome First Lady Kathy Justice. Good morning, everyone. It's just such a pleasure for me to be here today and see all these great faces here. Um, we are here to celebrate Women's History Month, which is just near and dear to us all. And we all know so many great people in our lives that have been influenced our lives and have shaped our lives. Uh, when I was growing up as a girl in Prosperity, West Virginia, that's right outside of Beckley, um, I was an only child, but I had a wonderful mother who probably at that time, I didn't realize what an inspiration she was on my life. But she has just, uh, as I get older, you know, she just, so many of the things she told me and taught me has just come to be to fruition and it's just been wonderful. Uh, my mom, I was fortunate also to have, she had, uh, I told Vicki three sisters, but there were four other sisters besides my mom. So they were from a strong, 
uh, a strong women's background that I have. At that time, you know, women, uh, like in my mother's time, probably didn't, you know, for them to do any technical job or anything, that wasn't, that wasn't what they were doing now. It was, you know, but my mom, like, kept books for my dad with a small company, had an aunt who went to school after she raised her family to become an RN, which was just a great inspiration to everyone. So, you know, even at that time, there were people that were doing things to, um, forge women ahead in history. And uh, at that time, we all had a lot of fun together and we talked a lot and we were all very close. But, you know, we shed a lot of tears but had a lot of fun times as well. Um, West Virginia has been home to many amazing West Virginia women, which were mentioned just a few minutes ago, but we may also think of these as well. Uh, Pearl Buck was on there, we all know that, from Hillsboro. From time to time, we'll pass by our house there, Hillsboro, on the main road, which is just this little white two-story house that's still there, so clean and pristine. Uh, Mother's Day founder, uh, Anna Jarvis, so we're all familiar with that. The great mathematician, Katherine Johnson, which is just, you know, her success to fame and everything is just insurmountable, what she's done. Our country singer, Kathy Matea, and our actress, Jennifer Gardner, we can't forget her, and uh, Mary Lou Retton, who was our great gymnastics. But there are many other not as famous West Virginians that we need to remember. The president of the uh, American University is Sylvia uh, Matthews Burwell from Hinton. And she actually, <clears throat> excuse me, is a good friend of a good friend of mine in Lewisburg. And so she has just a very accomplished young lady. So she is wonderful. I know uh, my friend Kelly and her children will go visit her from time to time. So it's a real continuing relationship from childhood that they had from Hinton, West Virginia. Um, the Revolutionary War heroine Elizabeth Zane from Berkeley County. The Confederate spy during the American Civil War, Belle Boyd from Martinsburg, and the opera singer that I thought this was, see, this was on here, but it wasn't, <laughs> Eleanor uh, Sturber from Wheeling. In fact, uh, later on this month at the Cultural Center, you probably would maybe be interested in see, seeing a mink stall that's be on exhibit there that belongs to her, and that uh, there's going to be just a great exhibit over there. So if you're there, please go in and check this out. It's going to be really fun for you to look at. In closing, it's very important that we from women from West Virginia have so much to be proud of. There's so many great people in this room. Uh, I have two great people that work with me at the mansion. They are just great. I can't praise them enough for what they accomplish and do. <laughs> They're wonderful. And uh, I just, uh, I, as I came in today, I saw um, a young lady and her son from our hometown, uh, Carrie Baldwin, she just left. I just saw that, but it, it's good. So, and Carrie uh, works, she's in an instrumental role, in a leadership role, and she just does a wonderful job. Just please remember that there are many of you here today in the audience that I don't know, but you feel confident in yourself. You have the power to do everything. You know, it used to be maybe 20 years ago, 25 years ago, that girls and women were not meant to be in the technical field. But right now, um, as I was growing up, um, I, I'm a teacher. Uh, my daughter at that time, well, when I was growing up, people were teachers, you know, that's why you went to school. Now that's all changed. I have a daughter who's a doctor. We always encourage her to go on beyond what she wanted to do, and if that's what she wanted to do, do it, you know. So we have to uh, do the technical Te technology of today, we have to keep up with with women. And people are more interested in this now. So, you know, just shoot for the moon. You can do anything that you want to do and just get the support behind you. And again, thank you for letting me come today and see you all and have a great month. And please go to the Culture Center and see the exhibits. It's wonderful. Thank you. It's always wonderful to be with the First Lady, and she's always gracious and able to talk to you. So if you have a question you want to ask her after it's over, she probably will sit and talk to you about it for a while, she's, unless she's in a hurry, which I understand.
Uh, right now, I'd also like to introduce uh, Brian, who is the regional representative for Senator Manchin. Uh, Senator Manchin uh, sent a greeting. Thank you, Julie. Good morning. My name is, is Brian Aloise, and I'm very happy to be here today on behalf of your United States Senator Joe Manchin III to help kick off Women's History Month in the Mountain State. To uh, mark today's occasion, Sen Senator Manchin sent me down here with a greeting, and I'd like to read it on his behalf. And it, it says, on behalf of the citizens of the Mountain State, and as your United States Senator, it is my distinct honor to send this message today to all those celebrating Women's History Month. While Gail and I regret that we cannot join you in person today, we sincerely appreciate the opportunity to reflect on the evolution and achievements of West Virginia women. Famous writer Ralph Emerson said, do not go where the path may lead, go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Generation after generation, women have set forth on new paths and dramatically redefined their role in society. Women have come a long way. They have changed our state, our nation, and our world for the better. As we look to our future, we must continue to encourage all young women to grow and accomplish great things. We need to begin at the earliest levels, providing our daughters and granddaughters with the tools and confidence they need to become productive and successful adults. I appreciate the West Virginia Women's Commission, the Herbert Henderson Office of Minority Affairs, and First Lady Kathy Justice for hosting this enlightening event. Through your unwavering commitment, to better the lives of others, and by providing a helping hand and voice to those in need, you've made West Virginia an even better place to live, work, and raise a family. I sincerely thank you. I wish you all the best as you continue to build an even stronger voice for the women of the Mountain State. Again, thank you for your participation, and may God bless you. With warmest regards, your United States Senator Joe Manchin III. Thank you. Thank you, very lucky to have people who support us in this state and we appreciate it so much. Now I would like to turn over the program to our most fabulous administrative assistant extraordinaire Dee Waters. I feel like I should say something like thank you, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> But thank you. <laughs> In keeping with uh, Women's History Month and recognizing the accomplishments of West Virginia women, I want to invite you to join us in August for Women's Commission's, Women's Commission's Legacy of Women's Women Awards given in eight categories. The awards are named after women of substance and, and accomplishments from West Virginia, such as Lena Lowe Yost, who led the drive for the right for women to vote, Susan Duhoff, who was the first female to be licensed in the state as a physician, and Anne Catherine Flagg, a playwright, teacher, and actress, who through her work transcended racism and campaigned for black voter registration. So please be thinking about who you would like to nominate for this year's awards. Soon we'll post event details along with nomination forms on our Facebook and website pages. Now, please help me welcome a friend of the West Virginia Women's Commission and Executive Administrative Assistant for the Herbert Henderson Office of Minority Affairs, Michelle Pettis, who will share a few words and read the governor's proclamation. Good morning. I will start by reading the proclamation on behalf of Governor Jim Justice. Whereas West Virginia women of every race, class, and ethnic background have made historic contributions to the growth and strength of our state in countless recorded and unrecorded ways. And whereas West Virginia women have played and continue to play critical economic, cultural, and social roles in every sphere of the life of the state by constituting a significant portion of the labor force working inside and outside of the home. 
And whereas West Virginia women have played a unique role throughout the history of the state by providing the majority of the volunteer labor force. And whereas West Virginia women were particularly important in the establishment of early charitable and cultural institutions in our state. And whereas West Virginia women of every race, class, and ethnic background served as early leaders in the forefront of every major progressive social change movement. And whereas West Virginia women have served our country courageously in the military. And whereas West Virginia women have been leaders, not only in securing their own rights of suffrage and equal opportunity, but also in the abol abolitionist movement, the emancipation movement, and industrial labor movement, the civil rights movement, and other movements, especially the peace movement which create a more fair and just society for all. And whereas, despite these contributions, the role of West Virginia women in history has been consistently overlooked and undervalued in the literature, teaching, and study of West Virginia history. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Jim Justice, Governor of the State of West Virginia, do hereby proclaim March 2019 as Women's History Month in the Mountain State and encourage all who read these words to share this proclamation so the rich stories of the accomplishments of West Virginia women can be told and heard again and again to inspire others to make a difference in their communities and the lives of West Virginians. I would like to say thank you first to my director, Jill Upson, who could not be here today and is traveling. I do have a few remarks that I'd like to share, but thank you first to Director Pallas for continuing to support the women in West Virginia by holding this kickoff, and First Lady Justice as well for your endearing and encouraging heartfelt words. I'm excited to share that HOMA, the Herbert Henderson Office of Minority Affairs, is partnering with the West Virginia Women's Commission to hold a Women's Expo in December. This is the first ever for our office, and we are looking forward to working with Director Pallas and her commission to celebrate and educate and strengthen the West Virginia sisterhood. Today is the acknowledgement and celebration of the sisterhood of trailblazing women from our great state, as those that were mentioned here today. We have Katherine Johnson from White Sulphur Springs, as mentioned. Also from Bluefields, we have Dr. Patrice Harris, who set her trail ablaze in healthcare leadership. She is the president-elect of the American Medical Association, which happens to be the largest association of doctors and med students in the United States. We also have the woman who has taken care of her family while working one to two jobs, or the construction for woman that is, a, that is caretaker to airing, ailing parents, or the single mom raising children while working full time and studying for her bar exam. It is women like these, like us, and the others mentioned here today that have blazed trails for us for us today, as well as the next generation. Ladies, the purpose of our journey is to prepare the way, to blaze the trail for the next generation, allowing them to exceed our accomplishments. The world is not perfect. We have a lot to achieve still yet, and it won't happen unless we continue to gain momentum through the igniting power of the pursuit of our individual destinies. I challenge each woman listening today to take this month West Virginia Women's History Month to reassess, to rethink, and to reignite their own purposes and plans, making their own history. Now go forth and prepare the way. Set your own trail ablaze. Thank you. That was great. Thank you, Michelle. That was wonderful. And now, for your entertainment pleasure, I am happy and honored and thrilled to introduce you to an activist for all good causes, an accomplished writer, including four anthologies, one being Appalachian Reckoning, which is currently sold out. She's also a spoken word artist who has recently featured in Anthony Bourdain's series, Parts Unknown, and the acclaimed film, Hillbilly. 
The content of her piece today will be about, you guessed it, women. Please welcome Crystal Good. Your entertainment is here. Um, thank you all for having me. Uh, thank you, Miss Kathy, and um, thank you, Miss D. And uh, when they invited me here, you know, they said, Crystal, nonpartisan, okay? <laughs> so um, here's a little ditty. Hello, my name is Crystal Good. I'm a liberal Republican, a conservative Democrat. I have libertarian tendencies, and I love me a good mountain party. That's all you got. <laughs> but seriously, folks, I really prefer the category in this very polarized political landscape of wild, wonderful, and free West Virginia woman. Yeah. West Virginia woman, it's an inclusive category. And it includes my grandmother, Leona, my grandmother, Jackie, my grandmother, Titcher, whose pearl handles from her silverware I wear on my neck today. Aww. My mama Toke and Granny Mae, who still texts and calls and guides me every day. It's you, your sisters, your aunts, your nieces. Either by birth or by choice, we welcome you as a West Virginia woman. All of us, precious daughters of this rich American history built in struggle and triumph, a future ready to become. So I do fancy myself a poet, and I wouldn't have the place or purpose to dream myself a poet in West Virginia if it wasn't for the other West Virginia women poets that came before me, like Maggie Anderson, Rita Mae Reese, or Irene McKinney. But I have one that I'm particularly fond of, one that's not so known. And her name is Mrs. Etta Smith Duckworth. She's from Cabell County. And her poems were archived in her journal until Marshall University published them in her book titled Ramblings of a Scorched Soul. She was a lifelong resident of Huntington. She didn't go to college. She was a wife and a mother, a community activist, and very vocal in the Women League of Voters. And so what I would like to do now is share one of her poems her poems do not have titles, but when Marshall University put the book together, they put it in sections. And this section, the title, uh, the book, the poem I'm going to read is from her section, Roots. And since they don't have titles, they just simply begin, I'll begin. Discussion, Jesse Owens. Can't we locals research and find giants of the earth? Tell who we were here who they were, what were their accomplishments. They lived in the section that birthed me, nursed me, till here I am. Please, I must tell you about these people. And what I believe Miss Duckworth is doing in her poem is challenging us to celebrate our own people, our people of here, discussion, Jesse Owen, she says, we have our own heroes here. And here I am, and here you are. And when I knew I was coming and I really wanted to share Ms. Duckworth's piece, I thought about the, all the unsung heroes, all the women that aren't Googleable, all the ones that aren't in history books. And so I asked my Facebook friends to make a post on my page, and I hope that uh, this idea will carry on with the West Virginia Women's Commission throughout the month, and people will drop names there of, their, of the women that have made an impact on them. So if you just allow me a minute, I just want to read a couple of these names. Sheila Coleman Castile, Colleen Anderson, Amy Goodwin, Leisha Lee, Ollie Watts, Ethel Caffey Austin, Libby Ballard, Fanny Cobb Carter, Mary C. Snow, Pam Nixon, Judge Irene Berger, Janet Louise Thompson, Pam, Pam Hayes, Grace Noel, Louise Palumbo, Nancy Tonkins, Jeannie Mosier, Ancilla Bickley, Vivian Conley, Bonnie McCohen, Sandy Fisher, Felicia Chase, Becky Kane, Keely Steele, Denise Giardina, Ann Magnuson, Re Re Rebecca Robbins, Rebecca Jane Menifee, Marion Harold, Barbara Weaver, Edith Javins, 
Joyce DeWitt, Anna Jarvins, Loretta Vance, Bricktop, and Blaze Star. And with that, I'd like to close with a poem of my own in, in the memory of Etta Duckworth, the unsung heroes, the women that we may not know, our grandmothers, our, our brothers, wives. And it's called Almost Heaven, Almost Famous. For the girls who never made it anywhere but home. For the couldas, the shouldas, the wouldas I tried. Regrets, like shotgun pellets missing the can, ambition shooting up landscapes, or stuck in the well. Well, I was. Well, I did. Well, I met. Well, but. But what? But you didn't. No better, no worse. You went that route only to return and turn those coulda, shoulda, wouldas into a life, a poem of sorts. Where almost is good enough. Almost heaven. Almost famous. Thank you all for your time, and I'm super excited about the Women's Summit coming up with the Herb Henderson Office of Minority Affairs. I am a maker, uh, a West Virginia businesswoman and a maker, and Miss First Lady Justice, I'd like to present you with a gift. Thank you all so much for letting me share. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. I had somebody call me and say, oh, I'm so sorry I can't be there. I just met Crystal, and I really wanted to hear her speak. <laughs> so thank you. We're glad we got to. I want to thank all of our distinguished guests for being with us here today. And I did want to invite you to our next event, which is going to be April 2nd for uh, Equal Pay Day. And that raises awareness, and I'm going to read this about the need to create pay, pay equity for all West Virginians, no matter their gender or race identity, their age, ethnic or national background, social or economic status, sexual preferences, or physical abilities. I'll post details later. But that's important to all of us, not just to women, but to all of us. Also, anybody here, please let us know about your activities this month so we can share them. If they have to do with women or families, etc., we would love to share them on our Facebook and, um, and on our website. So please share those with us. In closing, I just want to thank you all for being here. It means a lot to us. And I want to say that each of you matter. Your talents are needed. Your voices must be heard. Go forth, be equal, and live your passions. And thank you for being here today. <laughs>